Is this paper as good or even better than artist grade papers like Arches? As a watercolor artist, I've tried many different papers and today I'm going to show you some of the paintings that I've done using this paper over the last month or so and I'm going to give you my opinion if this paper is actually worth it or not. Normally, I say don't go for the Artist Loft brand, go for either a student brand or a professional brand if you're at Michaels, because this is a Michaels brand. However, I was very surprised to see that Artist Loft now offers 100% cotton paper. Now, this is mold-made paper, and all that means is they've put the paper into a mold and just pressed it down that way. And there are a lot of papers that are mold-made, and there's still great papers out there. So that's nothing against this paper. And this is actually in a block form. So what that means is all four sides are glued and there is just one little spot where you can dig your palette knife in or whatever you're going to use to take the paper off. So it's really great if you're doing a lot of wet on wet painting because it's going to keep your paper nice and flat. So I really like that. Now this paper is 12 inches by 16 inches and at Michaels this retails for about $86. Now that's Canadian so convert that into whatever currency that you use but that's about $4.30 per sheet because there are 20 sheets in this. Now the arch is 12 by 16 watercolor block goes for about $120 at my local Michaels which is $6 per sheet because it also has 20 sheets and I find that watercolor papers tend to be a little bit more expensive here in Canada so if you are from the US or other places they're most likely a lot more cheaper than the prices that I'm talking about right now. Like I mentioned, this is a watercolor block. So this is really great if you're doing a lot of wet on wet painting because your paper is not going to lift and buckle as much. And all that means is that it is glued on all four sides. And there is one spot, usually it's up here, where you can slip your palette knife in or whatever you're using to get the paper off. But one of the things that I don't like about this paper is the spot is actually over here in the corner. And I find that so weird that you would have the corner of the paper where you can slip something in and lift this paper off because if you are doing a wet and wet painting then this corner is going to buckle and your paint is going to start running back and that could cause a bloom so that's kind of one feature that I don't like about this paper I wish they would have put it like somewhere over here like most other watercolor blocks one other thing I do really like about this paper is it is a bright white and it might not be coming across on the camera right now but as soon as I grab a sheet of arches cold pressed paper you can just see the difference between the arches and the artist loft this is such a white paper and just for reference this is the academy cold press this is also a nice whiter paper it's whiter than the arches not quite as white as the artist loft and then here's the paul rubens watercolor block as well i would say this is probably a little bit closer to the artist loft but i think the artist loft is still a little bit whiter than all of these now while i have all of these papers here i just want to talk about texture for a second these are all cold press papers so they are going to have a little bit of texture to them compared to hot press papers which are a lot more smooth and i would say the artist loft is between the paul rubens and the arches so i would say the paul rubens has a little bit more texture to it and then the artist loft definitely has a bit more texture than arches does and then the academy cold press here is just slightly smoother so depending if you like papers that have a little bit more texture or a little bit less texture i would say this one's pretty much right in the middle of it now this is a pretty big sized block and a lot of people aren't going to do paintings of this size i know they have two smaller sizes i think a 9 by 12 and then maybe a 5 by 7 ish size but when i get a big block like this i actually like to take it and cut it down into smaller sheets and and then I can do smaller paintings and I just take them down and it works just as good. So these are just a few of the paintings that I've done to really test this paper out. Some of the things that I really like about this paper is the colors stay very vibrant on this and I don't know if it's because it's such a white paper. I've never noticed it with my arches paper before but I do notice a nice difference especially in the poinsettia here in the sky. The colors really do pop on this paper get some really nice smooth transitions with this paper the colors don't lift easily so for example in this painting and this painting I ended up re-wetting the whole thing and going back over and same here and none of the colors lifted very easily on the paper I really like this paper if I'm doing more wet on dry paintings but what I really don't like about this paper and this might be a deal breaker for you depending on the way that you paint is this paper is not great for wet on wet 
So if you do a lot of wet on wet painting, this might not be the paper for you. This paper dries extremely fast. So let me show you an example. Now this was done using the Academy cold pressed paper and I want you to focus on the background here. So I put all of my colors in the background. Everything was wet on wet. While it was still wet, I went in and put my branches in because I really wanted this to be like a loose blurry background. And then I also went in and added some out of focus snowflakes. So all these big um, darker snowflakes, three layers of that was done wet on wet all at the same time. This paper handled it perfectly. This paper would not, it dries so quickly. It's kind of a nightmare when you wanna do a background like this. And I tested this technique on this paper and it did not go well. Now, as I mentioned, I did do a little bit of wet on wet painting with these two paintings here. And what I actually had to do was paint a little bit, let it dry completely. And then I re-wet the whole painting again, and then just added more color to it. So that's kind of a workaround if you wanna use that technique. But usually I like to just get everything done in one go when I'm doing wet on wet. So don't feel like just because it doesn't work for one technique or that it doesn't work for my technique, that it might not work for you. So I have to say I'm actually quite impressed with this paper. It performs very well. Like I said, for me, I would choose this paper when I know I'm not doing a lot of wet on wet painting. And I would probably cut this size down like I've done here to create smaller paintings and just tape them down. That way you get a little bit more use out of each sheet. So it'll go a lot longer. So then the cost of this block is definitely cut down even more. And I do that for the large arches blocks as well. If you wanna see more watercolor content, then be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss my videos. And please give this video a like if this information was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.